panels and um, clearances in front of equipment. I want you guys to highlight this one and I want to write a few things about it. Um, um, if you have not done that, this is, by the way, if you're using the NEC code book, this is page 30, 38, page 38 in the NEC code book, page 38 in the NEC code book. Um, so where's my marker? Here you go. Here's my highlighter. So please highlight this is, if you have a switch gear, I'm going to show you a few pictures. If you have a switch gear, a switch board, a panel, you're supposed to, as a designer, now we're not electricians, remember? Most of us, we're designers. When you design a building in the electrical room, you're supposed to have a clearances in the front of the electrical equipment. That clearances is for the electricians to work safely on these equipment. This table is for low voltage. Um, I'm going to highlight a few things. Here's the table, guys. There's condition number one. Condition number two and condition number three. Condition number one, Chad is a switch gear. Right in the front of me is non-grounded object, meaning wood, um, sheet rock wall. That's condition one. Condition two is I am a switch gear, and right in the front of me, neck is actually a, uh, um, a concrete wall or a chiller. Anything grounded, they call it grounded object. A chiller, um, metallic frame of a chiller, an air handling unit, a wall, a block concrete, that's condition number two. Condition number uh, number three is Chad is a switch gear and Chris is another switch gear or switchboard facing each other, face to face. The worst. When you have two energized objects facing each other. Or I'm a switch gear and you are a generator. That's hot too, the generator side. That's also a, a hot to hot objects. Uh, you have energized part in both sides, the, the, the connection. Okay. I'm going to highlight these. Uh, they go. They, they they take them guys by by voltage. So here's what I'm going to write. And please write it down. They go by grounded voltage, uh, nominal voltage to ground. The first one here will cover you guys. If you have 208, the first line, the voltage is for the first line is actually 208 slash 120, 240 slash 120 volt. If your system is is 208 120 or 240 120, you are at line one. Right? Because the line to ground is not more than 150. If your system is, if your system is uh, 480, like we do 480 slash 277, or 600 uh, slash uh, 3, what's uh, 600 divided by square 3? 600, 600 divided by uh, 1.73, um, 347. 347 volt. If your system is 600 or 480, you are looking at the line number two. And I'm going to highlight them. If you guys write yourself, the red goes with the red here, and the green, the blue, the blue circuit goes with the blue. Cool? So that's how you use this one. Make sense, guys? Voltage wise. Voltage wise. I need somebody to tell me. And I always to test the people. What if you have an ungrounded system, Ashley? You are an electrician and Tao and everybody else can help, Ashley. What if you have a 240 ungrounded system? Ungrounded system. What do you do? Anybody can tell me if you have an ungrounded system? You guys have, we haven't talked about ungrounded systems yet. What if you have an ungrounded system? You don't have voltage to ground. You have a delta. What would you do? Ungrounded system. If you have an ungrounded system, a delta, you go by the voltage line to line. For example, if you have a system 240, ungrounded, which column, which one are you going to be going to? 240. Look at that, 240, 120, we go to the top. But if I have 240, ungrounded, where am I going to go? It becomes 240 to ground, it puts me down into the second one. So this is kind of a special case where you have a 240 volt delta, for example, that will also put you in this in this area because the voltage to ground is 240. There's no voltage to ground, but when you do the calculation, voltage to ground is 240. Any question guys about this table? Any question about this table? I want to make sure that everybody understand it, understand it fully. And then we'll go back into the pictures, like you guys like pictures. Okay, panels. Um, single phase panels, I'm going to skip that one because you guys are, we, we did that one. Three phase panels. When they design a panel, and I know some of this is completely uh, redundancy. When they design the panel, guys, very, very interesting. Uh, they have uh, from right to left, um, sorry, from left to right. Can you guys see from left to right? 
A, B, C. They don't go C, B, A. It's always A, B, C from right, from left to right, and it's always neutral. Can you see where the location on the neutral on the left? On the on the right, you have the location of the ground. There is one bar for the grounding conductors, one for the neutral on the left. On the right will be the ground, and the phases are in between. I want to bring your attention, guys. <clears throat> the buses they bring. <clears throat> look at this here. They bring the phase A across the whole panel, and then they bring phase B, a bus. This is copper bus or aluminum bus, mostly copper or aluminum. Um, across the hole, and then phase C, black, what is that? Black all the way across, all the way down. Cool? This is very important. So the buses, each phase goes all, cover all the way down. If this is a panel, you're going to see a bar, a cover bar for each phase is going all the way down. Everybody knows how the construction is? That might not help you. Not, 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 that's not a big deal, but what I want to say right now is the big deal. When they label them, they always go phase A, phase B, phase C. This is this is important. If you guys are sleeping, you have to wake up now. So this is will be. I'm going to use uh, the color coding for them. This is phase. Can you see here? This is phase B. Oops, mistake number one. This is phase A, phase A, A B C, then A again, then uh, B C, then A again, then. BC. Okay, so then you go into an A, and uh, this will be my B, and B, and B, and B, and B, and B, and the last one would be, and I'm going to go fast here, C, 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 and C, and C. Very, very important. This is how they label them. A, B, C on both right and left. A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. So, um, on, can you guys see across from each other is always the same phase so can you see that one two are always coming from the same phase every two numbers across each other is coming from the same phase so when you label your circuit remember i told you guys if you have a multi-wire brand circuit you always have to have adjacent odds or adjacent evens because the way they label them it's one two three four all the odds on the left all the evens on the right one last thing. Say I want a multi-wire brand circuit out of this system. Here's his bunch of lights, and Chris likes to. His I have uh, ten lights here. I have twelve lights here, and I have thirteen lights here. And I assign my friend Chris to de to design the system, and he said, Chad, I'm going to save money. I'm going to bring phase A to this group, and I'm going to bring phase B to this group, and I'm going to bring phase uh, C to this group, right? And guess what? They all need neutral, right? They all need neutral. So I need to go grab a neutral from here. Can you guys see where the neutral came? And landed here, and here, and here. And what, you have, what you're looking at right now, this is called multi-wire branch circuit. Any question, you got to understand as a designer how they connect them. This is typical multi-wire branch circuit. Coming from every phase, so this will be circuit two, four, and six are multi-wire brain circuit. You can bring him to a receptacle, or you can bring him to a light, or you can bring him to an air handling unit. As a matter of fact, any any load that uh, that need a three phase um, and a neutral. If I have an air handling unit, so take this. I have my air handling unit. Then I'm going to take a three phase for this baby, and um, I'm going to go back again from phase A and phase uh, B, and phase uh, C, and air handling unit does not need a neutral. They don't run on a neutral, okay? If they need a neutral, they create it inside with a, a transform. There is a three-phase load. This is, you have to understand, this is called the three-phase load. This is called single-phase uh, load. Now the last thing I want to show is two phase load or two hot load. I have a chill um, a fan, and I'm going to burn this fan actually at two a uh, 208. Here's my fan, and it's burning at 208 single phase. So I grab this, and I grab my where's the other one? Quick look chat here. Okay, and this is this will be single phase load. Single phase load. Still single phase load, even though it's coming from two hots. 
this is the most confusing for people to understand the free system. The free -fit system. You can get this system as 208 slash 120 volt, 480 slash 277, 600 slash uh, 347. These are the most typical voltages that we use in the US and this type of system. If I ask you if I'm using the 48277, all these fixtures would be burned at what? 277. This air handling unit will be burning at 480, and this pump will be burning at 480 single phase. If you have two phases, it's always single phase. Any question about this? You've got to understand these three types of loads that you can tie to a three phase panel. Oh, I forgot one little thing the ground. You always don't you ever forget Mr. Ground. Don't you ever forget Mr. Ground. So you're going to come from here and ground the enclosure and also ground the enclosure and also ground the enclosure. And then you're going to come from here and ground the enclosure. And you're going to come from here all the way and ground the enclosure. Can you see how, how you dewire it? The ground. Can I get a thumbs up, Chad? We know it. Now we would never forget that one, or at least we know before you came to you anyway. Okay, so that's how a typical three-phase panel is. Typical three-phase panel is. How many circuit breaker you can get into them? They used to limit them 42, now the limit is what? The sky, you can get them up to 84 panels, circuit breakers, right? 84 slots, like this little one. Um, another thing I want to talk about panels, guys, sizes. Sizes, I told you Dewalt, how Dewalt size them. You can get from a 60 amp, um, well, three-phase panels mostly 100 amp all the way to uh, uh, 6,000 amps, but then they change them. So size-wise, speaking of size-wise, you are looking at a 100 amp all the way to a 4,000 amp. But they change them though. There's uh, there's load centers. Remember when the, uh, Mr. Christensen was here, Todd Christensen, he talked about load centers, guys. Load centers, baby stuff up to 200 amp. Then they have the panel boards. The panel boards are the ones that need, their back is not strong enough to hold itself, so they have to rack them against the, or push them against the wall. They call them panel boards. The ones that you need to push against the wall or put in the wall, the panel boards, mostly they go up to 1200 amps. You go higher than 1200 amps, what do you do? You have a switch gear, switchboard design. What's a switch gear, switchboard design? Switch gear, switchboard design, you put that switch gear right in, in, mid, in the middle of a room. It's standalone, like a refrigerator, pull it and put it right in front of the switch gear in, in, in the middle of a room. Any question, guys, about the load center? Baby stuff up to 200 amp, 28 mostly, 240, we're not going to even talk about it. Panel boards, you can go all the way up to 1200 amps. You need a wall to support them in or um, you put them on the wall or in the wall. Then you move it to the switch gear and switchboard design, and these are standalone structure, like this structure. You're looking at it right here. You can grab this structure right now, actually, and put it right here. And if it's a switch gear, it's solid enough to stand and it, hold it itself. Okay? So that's, that's basically the panels. The last thing I want to talk about, the, the article that talks about the panels, guys, is 408. The article, NEC is 408. All this information is, them saying is in 408, article 408, NEC code book. Um, okay, any question about this? Any question? I'm gonna show you a few things about the panels as we go through. Okay, here's another panel. It's just bigger, up to 36. Um, labeling the phases. You guys don't need to know that one, but you have to probably be aware of it. From, look at this, from front, Front view, ABC, ABC, uh, top, front to back, ABC, with the way they label them, guys, left to right, ABC, front to back, ABC, side, um, ABC. So uh, top to bottom, if it's top to bottom, also ABC, uh, front to back, ABC, and left to right, ABC. So if you're looking inside the switch gear and you know which phase is phase B, 99% of the time is, is the one in the middle. Okay. Without talking, uh, taking the glory out of the manufacturers, there are two buses, guys. They, they size them in two things. They call them horizontal bus and vertical bus. You're going to hear this all the time. This bus here, can you guys see this? This is called horizontal bus. 
horizontal bus. This bus here, it's called vertical bus. For example, you can have this bus, the horizontal bus, 4,000 amp, and the vertical bus, uh, 2,000 amp. Very typical, where the horizontal bus will be always much bigger than the vertical bus. Because the horizontal bus come at the top and feed all these um, cubicles. They call them cubicles. When we now, if you're looking at this, Chris, what is the size of this switch gear? It's always the largest size. If I ask you, what size is this switch gear? This switch gear size takes the size of the horizontal bus because it's the largest. This is a 4,000 amp switch gear. Even though <laughs> the vertical buses are 2,000, but look how many 2,000 they can pull. Can pull multiple 2,000 out of uh, 4,000. Why do they have them this way? Because it's easier to bring the power at the top, horizontal, a huge amount of power, then tab into this power. Every cubicle will be tabbed and feed loads on a bigger stuff. You'll hear more about this when we go into the commercial, into the industrial. For the time being, just remember the horizontal and vertical. There's, um, I don't like to talk about this one, but this is a uh, center tab delta. Center tab delta, poor man's job. Um, a center tab delta, guys, is when you have a 480, it's a, a 240 slash 120 volt. 240, 120 volt. Why would you use a system like this? Never in a commercial building, because it's not a good idea. Uh, use it in, a, in places where there's a lot of three phase loads and very small amount of single phase load. Example, if you have a place where single phase load equal, I'm just going to dare to put 10%, uh, and three phase load equal to, um, let's just say 90%, right? Well houses is a good example of that, a well house. All the pumps, the pumping the water for the city of Minneapolis in a well house, all the room is full of pumps, pumping water. The only thing, single phase there, a couple of lights and a couple of, um, of receptacles. That's it. You might have a heater too. In a situation like this, this could be a, an application for it. The only thing that you need to know, guys, is the wild leg. This leg is called the wild leg, as you know. It's a high voltage, the voltage between this and the neutral is 208, that's why it's wild. You send an apprentice who is naive, they will go take a, from phase B, a conductor and burn a lighting fixture that's supposed to take 120 at 208. What happened if you put 208 at uh, 120, you burn equipment. That's why they want you to put a label here. The panel must be labeled with caution. Uh, phase B, most of the time phase B has a 208 voltage to ground, so Mr. AKA uh, smart apprentice, do not go and tab anything from B and the neutral. Okay, so this is not commonly used in a commercial, but just be aware of it. If you ever walk as a project manager, Phil, in, a, in, a, in an area and you see a panel and you see it, circuit breaker, open, circuit breaker, circuit breaker, open, circuit breaker. This is without even looking at it, an indication that you are looking at a delta center tab panel. Why do you think that opening is there? Because that's phase B. I can't steal phase B and feed anything from phase B. You, you know, you can't use it. You can't utilize phase B. You're not supposed to utilize phase B or to neutral. But I can utilize phase B to three phase, no problem. So out of this panel, guys, the only load that you can you can carry from the three phases is three phase load. Also, no problem, bring it on, Chad, two phases, phase A and phase B, two phases. This is single phase, right? Two hots. Um, and only from phase uh, uh, A, B, C, um, only from phase A, in this case, uh, from A and C, only from phase A and C that I can connect line to neutral. So, phase A and C. So if I want phase, phase A, I can take the neutral or B, no B, and uh, and another load here. Here's my single phase. So be aware of that. You can't use, you cannot use phase B with a neutral because that gives you 208 burn equipment. By code, you have to label it the color. 
the conductor either has to be color coded orange or you have to label it. Every time you see the conductor in a junction box or a panel, you have to put an orange tape on, uh, on it to indicate it's a wild lid. Uh, there's a couple of adjectives the electrician described it. I can't use it here. Any question guys about this? So that's what I like about the pictures because it's, um, it gets you hopefully the, okay, for panels. For panels, guys, you can, uh, uh, this is really interesting thing, um, Ashley, my friend. You can, there are two ways of doing panels. You can have the overcome protection device inside the panel, or you can have the overcome protection device outside the panel. If you look at these, these, each one of these is 200 amp, 200 amp, 200 amp. So here's my question for you. If I ask you, what's the rating of these three panels, each one of them? 200 amp. Take this. If the buses inside this were 225, 225, 225 amp, the, the actual cover inside the panel is 225, but the circuit paper is 200. What size panel is this panel? By code. The, this, this is interesting. The size of the panel always takes the size of the overcurrent protection device that would take the panel. Always. If I have a four thousand, if I have a four hundred amp panel, and I put a hundred amp circuit breaker, don't ask me why a fool would do that. A four hundred amp panel, and I put a hundred amp circuit breaker ahead of it. What size panel is this based on the code? A hundred amp panel. So the panel size goes by what the overcam protection device that protects it. One little thing you have to know <clears throat> that the overcam protection device, this one cannot be more than what the panel is rated for. For example. If I have a 400 amp panel, can I protect it with a 500 amp circuit breaker? No. If I have a 400 amp panel, can I protect it with 300 amp circuit breaker? Yes. Fool, no. Um, so the ideal situation net when you design it is try to match the size of the panel to the size of the aura protection device. That's the, the, the optimum design. Why? Cash. It doesn't cost you a whole lot. So sometimes we when we design it from Shad Cooley or anywhere else, we might if, if like if I have a 400 amp panel and my option is to go to 600 or maybe if I go to 400 I stick with a 400 amp panel <laughs> cheaper I might have to go to 400 because as an engineer I know my load is you know there's exaggeration with uh, future expansion all this good stuff so you, you use your judgment sometimes to go to a lower panel size just because of cheaper equipment but again judgment use it with caution okay so that's basically what the, the feeder um, this is they're having a disconnect switch that feeds them, and these are all gutters. This is another application of gutters, guys. This is where you can use a gutter um, or J boxes, gutters or J boxes, and you feed these panels. That's fine. That's okay. Any question, guys, about this? So this is a 225 amp panel, but it's rated for 200 amp. If I'm designing this project, Ashley, you know what I would do? I will change this one to 225 amp, take full, full capacity of that conductor, especially for 25 amps. Any question? I'm not going to talk about the tab rules here. Don't ask me today. See these tab rules here? These and these. We will visit the tab rules another time. Because it will take us another hour for the tab rules. Okay, um, overcam protection device, guys. We talked about the overcam protection device shall not exceed the rating on the panel. You can have circuit breaker or fuses as long as it doesn't exceed um, the the rating of the overcam protection device. A couple of things about panels too to be aware of. This is really interesting. If you guys want to highlight this one, please for me. Um, when you pull a load out of a circuit breaker, you cannot pull more than eighty percent of continuous load out of one breaker. So, for example, if I have here at 20 amp, and I have my load here, um, what size load can I pull continuously out of a 20 amp circuit breaker? I can pull 80% out of the rating of 20, uh, and that will give me a 16, right? Everybody can see where I got the 16 amps? So keep in mind, continuously, you cannot pull more than 20%, 80% out of a circuit, an overcompetition device, unless it's rated for that. Where would they be rated for that? Um, 
they, they call them later on, when we go to the industrial project, we're going to go to 100% rated circuit breakers. Um, then you can pull 100% out of them. But for the time being, you have a 100 amp circuit breaker and, uh, fill. Continuously, how much can you pull out of this 100 amp panel? 3% of it. Do you guys remember how, when we were sizing the panel, why we were multiplying it by 1.25? Because it ups the load. So it basically jacks up the size of the panel so it can handle my load. So when I say I need a 100 amp panel, 100 amp load, you, in reality, you have sized the panel for 125 amp. Okay, so just be aware of that one. Um, okay, so that's, but the other thing, as I said, guys, this, this size here, if this is 225 amp panel, my option are 200 amp panel or 225 amp panel, but I cannot put 300 amp panel on this way. Can I put this one as a, a fuse? It's a no, no, no. So I can't put the 300 amp fuse in the panel or ahead of the panel here. By the way, do I need an over convection device here if I have an over convection device in the, in the back here? No. Panels come as main breaker, main breaker or main lugs only. So if you have a, a breaker ahead of the panel, you don't need a, another breaker. It, it will be a waste of money, like what we're showing here. Okay, you can have, um, this is just talks about gutters, guys, and having enough, uh, enough gutters. I know if you look at the Cutler Hammer presentation, and I promise you I'm gonna stop in, in 15, 20 minutes here, or five minutes. Um, this is a feeder. <laughs> this is my main feeder coming and feeding multiple panels. So suppose this was a 200 amp panel and this was a 200 amp panel. Okay. So you brought your feeder. You have to have enough. If I'm going to do it this way, I have to have enough room here so I can splice. Can you see that splicing here? Unless you have main lugs only. If this is a main lugs only, then you don't have a circuit breaker. You have to have two double lugs. You remember, guys, when. Um, when Todd was talking about feed through panels and sub feed, if you have a sub feed panel, we bring a feeder in and out again to another, another panel. Most of the time, they don't have a circuit breaker for the first panel. The second panel can have one. Anyway, so if you want to do it this way and you tap right in here, well, guess what? What do I need here? I need more gutter. They call it wiring gutters. You need more, more room to, to tap into it or you have to have double lugs for it, and, and then the manufacturer has to basically custom design one for you with a fuse. So, okay, I want to stop here, guys, because I really want to spend some time on the spaces and the uh, uh, workspace around equipment. Any question? I want to spend some good time on the workspace around the equipment, the dedicated space. And I can't finish in five minutes. Any question for chat, guys? It's a Friday. Okay. Thank you.